So, you decided to try your luck and become a programmer. You wrote a CV and sent it. And then you sent it again and again and again. You expect a heap of invitations crashing your inbox. It is well known that everybody needs programmers. But instead of hearing back, all you hear are crickets. Recently, I had a consulting session with one of my viewers who suffered from this exact problem. I needed just one look to know exactly why they would never land a job with a CV like that. Hi, I am Smok, a senior software developer with over a decade of working experience. Over the years, I interviewed people for many positions, ranging from interns to senior devs. I went through interview trainings for corporations like Ericsson, Amazon and Cisco. And let me tell you, it's surprising how many people new to tech don't know what they are doing wrong. I'm going to show you the exact CV I was asked to review, and you can test your sharp eye in spotting the mistakes that can immediately take you off the candidate list. Only thing I have did to it was to anonymize that data. And this CV is shared with the permission of the viewer. So here is what you're going to do. Round of applause for their bravery, and then no mean comments. I mean that no mean comments. Right, before we dive into it, you should subscribe so you won't miss a video where I talk about making a good CV for tech business. All right, let's begin. Let's take a look at the CV, what we are presented with. It's very simple CV. It contains only single page and you can see that it's clearly laid out. It has an, a little bit of introduction, skills, education, related experience. So four sections, quite easy to follow. You need to think like a recruiter that is going to read your resume. So first thing that you need to do is zoom out, as I did right now, squint your eyes a little bit, and you see a lot of words in this document are underscored. They have this little squiggly line under them. So it doesn't really matter what words are those, but we already know that they are misspelled. Other things that you want to look at are grammar errors, formatting or style issues. And believe it or not, these are the issues that recruiters do pay attention to. You can see that you have some space over here that isn't present down here at the bottom. It's not something that is very obvious, but it stays there. The same thing happens over here, right? We have this white space that doesn't do you any good. So make sure that you have nicely formatted, correctly grammatical orthographic document. You may think it doesn't matter because you're applying for a technical hands-on job with compilers, code and such. But at the same time, you will write a lot of documents. You will communicate a lot with other people, often by writing. So this is a mistake number one, but it actually reveals something much more deeper. It reveals that whoever wrote this CV, they didn't read it enough. What we actually should do is read it enough times and correct it, fix it, perfect it enough times so you don't end up with grammatical or stylistical errors and mistakes. Let's dive in. Let's take a look deeper into this resume. All right, so this is what we are presented with. This is our guy and Mr. Anonymous has provided us with some introduction, a couple of skills that he mentions, education and of course some related experience. We know that this is a student and we know that they don't have a lot of experience in other companies, right? This is supposed to be their first job in tech. Let's take a look at uh, this thing. Eager to learn, student, um, experienced in full web, uh, full stack web development, great team player with work ethics. All right, so all of that is technically speaking correct, but it's also boring to tears. And on top of that, it presents contradicting image of yourself. Think about it. If you're a student, you cannot be experienced at the same time because experienced in the industry usually means five plus years of a career. So try and avoid painting an image that is inconsistent, incoherent, because it may seem that you're trying to pay, paint yourself as somebody who you are not. Moving on, moving down here. Automated software testing, Linux, Ubuntu, okay, that's fine. And then we go to algorithms. 
there are actually two mistakes here. You have put in an information that is way too basic. This is not impressive that you know a couple of algorithms from, you know, prisms, uh, crascals, and the extras. So be careful because if you say something like that, yeah, it seems that you don't know enough uh, to actually put something in here. Second mistake that is in this very small uh, section is mislabeling things. So look at that. Multi-threading and linked lists aren't actually algorithms, right? Linked list is a data structure and multi-threading, yeah, that isn't an algorithm either. Another thing that is mislabeled is an education se section right over here. So start by looking at software design. First thing here is agile methodology, Scrum. These things were part of your education and maybe part of this module, but this goes, you know, at the end maybe, or maybe even not. This is also way too basic of a skill to actually put that into a resume. Next thing is operating systems, C, C++ assembly. None of this is operating system. Let's take a look at mistake number five in related experience section. So we have a project and some description of it. And large portion of this description is having too much of technical information. But what do you mean too much technical information, you may ask? Well, this bit. This is totally useless. Installing anything on my machine simply is a security risk. It's very important to not try and push anybody to install anything on their drive because it's just suspicious. At the same time, most of these descriptions are not high level enough. The main goal of this uh, project is data presentation, exports a video. Okay, but what does it do? So all of these projects are actually linking against a GitHub repository, which is good, but at the same time, in there, there is no useful information what exactly the project does. It's sold so poorly that I wouldn't be able to follow what's going on even if I really, really wanted to try. Okay, let's go to the mistake number six, and we are staying in the related experience section. And the mistake number six is basically no data. Ha, ah, so we are harnessing big data files, but we don't say how big of a file. Are there four gigs? Are there 20 megs? Are there 40 tera? The scale is very important because it draws a very clear picture of what exactly you're experienced with. So always try to put as much data as you possibly can so you paint a consistent and concrete image. This section is very busy. Mistake number seven project temporarily pause due to online shop. Hmm, you have unfinished project here, unfinished project here. And I get that. We often don't finish our projects. And like to be totally frank, most projects that I worked on are never going to be finished. That's how it is, it's, it's totally fair. But at the same time, you have to have enough there for show. And if you have, don't say it's not finished right? That doesn't really matter. As long as you have the main functionality in the MVP, you can put that in, but don't say it's unfinished. It looks bad and try to avoid this. So mistake number eight is actually inconsistent information with your LinkedIn profile. So you have a LinkedIn profile here and you have some information in there that is not in this resume. If you have a certificate from Cisco, because you have finished some of their courses and you know took an exam and passed, even if that's expired, put that in because it is still an information to your employer that you were able to actually learn something, a new topic and pass the exam that you were presented. Even if it's expired, it's still a value. Another mistake here, related experience. So going on to this LinkedIn page, I learned that Mr. Anonymous actually was working previously in other companies. And this is not here, none of that. Truth be told, these companies aren't related to tech or IT at all. And that's fine. And this is also important for potential employer because they will understand what's your background, where are you coming from, that you were able to get a job, hold that job and perform it to certain standard. All right, so you guys had plenty of time to read this resume, pause at any given time and figure out 
what is the worst mistake done here? So there is one word that will take you off every single list of possible candidates. Do you see it? Yes, it's here. <laughs> it's basically this sentence and the word year. So if you put something like this in your resume, you're instantly person that is going on the no hire list. Why? Well, it's quite simple. Imagine this. In order to gain a valuable, productive employee, the company has to do recruiting, which takes a lot of time, and then actually onboard you, pay some money until you become productive, and only after half a year, up to nine months, you are self-sufficient enough, independent, to produce value for the company. So if you are saying that you're only looking for a year, they will never ever get their money back. So they won't hire you for this obvious reason. So beware and never ever put something like that in your resume. So these were 10 mistakes you should avoid when writing a CV for tech business. I'm going to see you in the next one. Subscribe.